it up. All right, so uh, it has in fact bugged like I thought it would, and fuck. Um, ah. We'll try to we'll try to prevent that from happening in the future, guys. Uh, so for Zombie Grub, I mean, like uh, it's not your fault. We just we are not used to fixing this. Uh, you have to invite one team first and then the other, otherwise this will keep happening. Um, but welcome back to the Tour vs. Tournament Tour Edition. We got a brand new best of three on our hands, and we'll leave the scoreboard off. It's first game anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it's 0 0, whether you see it or not. Uh, and yes, the overlay is again a little bit off. It's still buggy, and there's no best TV2 UI. The default TV2 UI is like a million times worse than this, so trust me, you're still getting spoiled rotten without nice and lux. Uh, that being said, we have in the top right corner of the map Team Burn the Baguettes. <laughs> a combination of. The Zerg player Laser and his teammate Fanatics Hearthstone. In the bottom left for Team Red Bloods, it's the Green Zerg Hanfi and the Red Terran Lucanine. All right, so these guys, it might not seem like it, but they're probably the strongest contenders in this tournament. I'm not saying this because I have faith in them above anyone else for X reason versus Y reason, just statistically speaking, as far as I'm aware, they're the only team that has real 2v2 experience. You know, constantly competing for world slots and rankings and all this. So, Laser and uh, Harson, they're good players, and it's nothing, like, you're not going to discount them just because they don't play a lot of 2v2s. But Lily Kanine and Hanfi, not only do they play a lot of 2v2s, they play a lot of 2v2s together. So there's going to be a lot more synergy between these two, I think, more over than anyone else. Uh, Lily Kinney is also streaming his point of view, so I don't know if they're on Skype discussing strategies, but if they are, it might be worth checking out. You can find his uh, Twitch there on Team Liquid. Interesting. I, I wonder why that shouldn't just be like a regular hatch. I mean, because uh, I think they're going to go aggressive with this. You want lots of larva, lots of lings? No, That's I know, thoughts. but why not just put it down at a natural anyways? Because it's exposed out there, whereas up here it's not. I guess, like, that's only like, against, like, a really big cheese. But that's that's kind of 2v2 in a nutshell, I think. Like, it's true. 2v2 is almost Maru, right? Like, <laughs> 2v2s all start with two raxes leading in a macro later if you survive. I think it's, like, the general logic of it. That's, so, that's true. Uh, but at the same time, wait, Lily, can he take another command star? So maybe not. I thought he was just going to go really ling heavy. He takes that speed uh, pretty quick. Or no, it's the laser taking the speed to take that back. Because, uh, yeah, hand piece isn't quite done. And Harsim's is going to proxy out of Stargate 2 in a very untypical location. Yeah, just kind of out, like, nowhere near, like, a ridge or anything, just literally right. in the middle of the map. And it's not necessarily that much closer, I feel, with, uh, than if he had put it, say, on the edge of his base here. Well, it's certainly not going to be scouted, and this was reported. And Lily Kanine will not have any defense against it. Or he might. Lily Kanine has thrown down a very fast engineering bay. So it's got to be a popular opener, right? We saw a lot of this from when we cast our last TV2 tournament. A lot of processes were opening up with the Stargate. And it makes sense because you have your teammate to kind of fall back on if you would like to macro out of it. You know, your mm, mini game might look yeah. a little shaky, but not if you have a teammate to help you out there. Uh, but what it actually looks like is that they're both just go very aggressive. So Ling's in the front, distract your opponent, get them repairing at the front or something, and then come in with a back stab of an oracle. Yeah, I mean, th there's queens out that might be able to help cover this and a turret on the way, but I mean, really, it's going to be hard to just have full base coverage while this goes on. Now, I thought this was going to be for lings or something crazy. He's going for a fast layer, so it's still, I mean, it's one base, but lots of roaches, maybe, I guess? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're certainly called, though, that, you know, if they were trying to defend the, the natural, as it were, then they would be in trouble. Yeah. You know? Maybe they get a bunker at the front, but then the lings run past the bunker anyways, and it's still a big problem. So it was certainly a good move, and I guess he still has the protection. So he's still using his money correctly, but as you can see here, they scouted how much gas was taken and the lack of a second pylon, I believe, even well, though it could have been somewhere else. I think they also scouted lack of natural bases, which was a pretty big deal. Uh, definitely, I think, what influenced the two bunkers coming down, at least. Well, that's true. That's really true. But the like, it could have been like a proxy, like the dark. Well, I guess the start would help out the dark too, wouldn't it? Well, that one would have gone in the front, not just the mineral line. Well, waiting for the attack to come down. The laser has not actually built that many banelings, so it might not be dedicating to this, but it's 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 a little bit worrisome because I'm looking at the counterattack potential. Like, let's say he breaks through these lings or whatever. That's a lot of roaches compared to what at home, really. Harsom's Stargate's so far away, he might not be able to avoid a void ray in time. Maybe get some immortals out, maybe not. It is a little bit worrisome, though, because they are playing somewhat blind. Uh, Harsom and the laser have no idea what awaits them outside of what this oracle has seen. And, I mean, seeing two hatcheries is just got to make you go like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, you got to figure they're going to be aggressive. It looks like the plan is that Hanfi's going to be aggressive, Lily Kanin's going to be very greedy. 
Uh, and I, I imagine Lily Kinney's going to go up to Mac. First of all, it's Lily Kinney. And second of all, it seems that Mac has been pretty good in 2v2s lately. Uh, yeah. And then he'll be able to actually defend at least that gold base as their third. I don't know about the other thirds because they're still kind of far out there. Yo, it's kind of. I'm actually really hoping to see some Terrans go far in this. Not that we didn't see it again. We saw Hart play really well with Crank in one of our 2v2 tournaments, but I would love to see like that's the European thing, right? Like, okay, over in Korea, it's Zergs and Protosses through and through. Over here in Europe, it's like Terrans are the key <laughs> makers. I don't know. It'd be cool to see if there's like an actual regional this uh, difference, I guess. But regardless of whatever tactics they are going for, uh, still no natural bases down. First one on the way, but a laser's blocking this out. Harsum's looking at a probe down here, so little bit annoying. Yeah. And so far these roaches have been entirely defensive, which seems a little unnecessary. Um, oh, it's hard to tell in a 2v2, because again, we have Lilikini being so greedy that maybe Hanpi uh, being so the opposite of greedy, <laughs> it's okay. I believe, but you know, as it is. I what? believe we just saw a big money dump to Hanpi, by the way, from Lilikini, so oh. tons of roaches popping out now, too. Something you normally wouldn't quite be able to afford this much on one base with. Well, let's see how it works out, because, you know, Harsom's already been getting Immortals. You know, he knew that the Roachborn was out and that they, you know, he was investing into Roaches. So he's going to have at least two Immortals, but not a whole lot of fodder to back him up. I guess it's going to depend on the Lings from a laser. This is actually quite scary. That's 25 Roaches, Zombie Grub. I mean, Immortals are good. And I guess with one century, he'll hold the top I of the ramp, that. but they don't want to sacrifice the Naturals. I love that the supply for Lily Kanini is just so in the gutter. <laughs> it is. I think, he's just, I think he is just feeding Hanfi at this point. Yeah. Uh, they're bringing everybody out the front. The Immortals cannot be targeted down. They're actually what's going to save him, but well, it's, well, they just get targeted down immediately. <laughs> so he so. walks up to them and targets them down. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like this will be good enough to be almost game. I mean, the Roaches are starting to pile out. If he was able to keep those alive, Man, even for like yeah. 30 seconds long. The Immortals on the front so line different. were definitely the biggest detriment to this. If those had been pulled back a little bit, if they hadn't started out there, maybe it's a little bit different. But the other thing for Harsom too, is if that Stargate was in base, Void Rays come out and hold this without question. Yeah, but as it is though, they still held it, and they, they you know, yeah. with a, a modest amount of probes, and of course both bases. Well, it's still taking losses nonetheless. I mean, look at the resource loss right now. Sure, it looks quite big for Hampy, but it's equalized for the uh, both teams combined on the other side. So look at Ian, who's done not a lot of really anything at this point. Hopefully it doesn't fall too far behind. Because uh, as good as feeding your ally may be, playing 1v2 is still going to be difficult, especially when someone's making units that directly counter you, like, say, Immortals. Yeah, now it looks like... Uh, it's burn the baguettes is gonna go ahead and push out here, and behind this, Henfi is gonna go ahead and do mutas again, only on one base. Double production, sure, but triple production. Oh, I'm sorry, triple production, sure. <laughs> this it, it seems so silly like this, right? But Lily can even feed him all this money. I mean, this it. it that move just now was so close to game ending for Harsum and the laser. It was really scary, but they did deal with it eventually. They, they did clean it up and. Now it's going to be the shoe on the other foot, so to speak. Can they hold? Can they defend against what the laser and Harsum are responding with? It's not that many immortals, but there are sentries, and sentries go a hell of a way when it comes to fighting against Zerg. Yeah, but you know, a laser doesn't have speed yet, and I'm really worried about the mutas. Harsum doesn't have that instant warp of like six stalkers. He's not attacking with blink stalker push, where you know you, you just warp in as many as you need. I mean, he really does not have a lot of warp gates. Uh, not a lot of money either. Yeah. The Mutas are going to become a bigger problem. They were enough to defend here, but since they can't pile on any more aggression until quite an amount of time, the Muta count's going to get really high. I'm loving the polite creep spread, by the way. Very intentionally trying to hug the uh, cliffside there. Nah. Uh, but wow, we get a very generous donation. $50 from Gnome John. Basically says he loves the 2v2 tournament and uh, put this towards the next one, he says. You bet you. Yeah. expecting it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, well, actually, I guess Harson didn't have a forge, so he put it on cans if he wanted to. Huh. Uh, even then, he's still just having to pull off the mineral lines like this kind of sucks, but losing the probes on top of it really hurts. Uh, Hanfi's sitting on what has got to be the lowest drone count. I mean, 18 drones right now, but again, Lake Kanin's just on three bases, <laughs> dropping mules like nuts. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What? Huh? What? What's amazing? He's on 90 army supply with 18 workers. Oh, yes, yes, sir. I didn't hear what you said, so I didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's, uh... It's ridiculous, though, because, I mean, the laser's not too far behind an army supply, right? But it's just... There's no way to stop the air. Well, Harsom's trying to do that right now by getting, uh, you know, two more Stargates, but yeah, the Phoenix aren't quite that. out yet, and there's nothing to take care of them. But they're just gonna win... There's... Okay, they're gonna blow through the sentries. 
Well, as you say, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna win the ramp. And, okay, the meters will eventually whittle away at a couple of the immortals, sure, but a laser's actually retained enough of those roaches that I think he could fight. He's down in upgrades, and that really sucks. True. But uh, the Phoenix production should be just, I think, more than enough to stop these mutas. Yeah, plus the mutas do have to come back to help out with the roaches, and actually, the Phoenix has come out, and they're gonna tango with the mutas. Uh, it looks like he's gonna transition away, which I, I, I figured was gonna be the response, right? Uh, because Harsem was going for the direct counter in Phoenixes. Are you he goes into both a Hydralis den and an Infestation pit. Are you kidding me with these hatcheries? It's like watching a No Rush 20 Minute, like, fastest money map back in Brood War days. You just built, like, 11 hatcheries, 13 hatcheries, no problem. Uh, Roaches can't quite fight this. Going a little bit extended or extended on the other side of the map. Phoenix is coming back to some of the mutas. Not quite taking the greatest engagements, but four Phoenix at a time. I think Harsom's finally slipping into that 2v2 mentality. Oh, 15 Hydras on the way. Those Phoenixes will not be that helpful. Oh, God. This is... It's... <laughs> This is like watching Parting play again, you know? It's it's not really 1v2 because Lily Kanin is his economy, but this is pretty ridiculous just how uh, how effective this has been. Yo, we, we can't really open their stream while we're streaming, but I'd love to like listen to them be like, Yo, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. It's like, it's kind of the first real 2v2 I guess we've seen, you know? <laughs> like, actual yeah. top tier 2v2 strats. We've seen people that time up builds correctly. We saw that last game, in fact. We've seen a you know, sort of rather smart play and helping each other out in one part of the game and the other person gets the late game or something like that. But rarely, like we've actually never seen someone depend on sending money to their, their friend, right? They might because it's a desperate situation, but it's not a build. Well, the Vito is finally removed from the equation, but man, that's a huge Roach Hydra army. And what's crazier more so is not that it's just a lot of Roaches and Hydras, it's Roaches and Hydras with upgrades. Now, Force Fields in this ramp could definitely uh, negate all of that, but that's... It's a big if. Uh, can he land those correctly? Will there be enough of them? Is Hanfi stupid enough to walk into a trap like that? Or some get that mothership core out of there, man. The <laughs> Kanin has four army supply. <laughs> it's 78 workers, though, and uh, that's kind of ridiculous. Oh, Harstam is walking out, though, into the oh, Roachers and Hydras. Why? I think he had maybe selected everything when he when he clicked on his Phoenix. That's my best guess. There's no reason to have extended at all. Force field's wasted. Force field's necessary. Banley's starting to morph in to deal with the Hydralisks. Uh, Banley's speed's still not quite done yet, but lots of time can be held at this ramp. But do they want to sit here turtled up for too long? He's on four bases. I know. It wants a gold. That's, like, the best part. There's like there. I can't see Harsom and uh, uh, a laser winning this game. Just gonna, they're gonna die uh -oh. in back row. Uh oh, who's lagging out? Oh no, is it me? You? Why? It is you. How? Uh, I'm I'm freaking streaming. <laughs> game paused. Is it me? How? Yeah, game resumed. How? <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. We'll leave that question for another time it seems to calm down for now we'll just thank the battle net for it i guess uh revelation does take all this but you said you don't see the money i actually would disagree because i feel like if hamphy it's it is just hamphy playing here right uh if hamphy goes up this ramp and if hamphy makes a mistake it, it's not like one person saying okay well you lost half your army and i can recover you know you it's pretty all in at a hamphy in regards to you either lose everything or you win yes. very one-sidedly yes, so and i feel much. like Colossus mixed with Banelings mixed with Force Fields. This should go in the favor of Hearthstone and, and uh, Elazer. We'll see how it goes. Actually, the, all the Banelings running almost into the Hydras. Ooh. We caught Roaches. And it actually might happen the way that you say. The army actually gets demolished. Yeah. The Banelings even coming back to help. Yeah, Where is the Remax though? Like, oh, look at you're on four bases. You must be sending money like crazy to Hanfi. What are you gonna Remax on? <laughs> this is insane. The amount of hatcheries, by the way. The amount of larva production available for Hanfi, uh, and he is using that money up really quickly. Twenty-three more roaches on the way, but you know this is uh, this is the problem with the Colossus now. There's not a lot of upgrades for a laser. He does have two zero though, so the roaches can contest with the roaches. But they're the buffer that Hearthstone needs to keep this Colossus, keep those immortals alive. And, uh, man, those those Banelings were pretty key to that defense. The Colossus was good, so were the Immortals. The Sentries didn't really have a lot of energy for Force Fields, but, damn, that, uh, that Banelink connection was so necessary. Yeah, combined, Harsom and Laser do have a better army supply, and that Colossus staying alive, actually, I would I, I would go even further and say the three Immortals staying alive. They're gonna add so much. I mean, oh, even five tanks would be so helpful here from Malik and Ian. I don't like that they're splitting up, to be honest. I think their greatest strength was when they were consolidated together. So far, gonna work. Oh, 
it is closer than maybe if they were together, but it looks like it's still gonna work. The three immortals are still alive. They're just like, oh my god, they're tearing through the roaches. Yeah, SC, you know, SCV is just kind of pulled at this point. I mean, like anything, Widowmite is just something. He can't make a single thing. One marine in production for Lake Anine right now. He has no production. He's been full farming the game for his opponent or for his ally. And yo, know, I guarantee you, Hampy's moves probably crush like 90% of the people out there. But as I stated before, despite this team synergy and despite this cool teamwork, Harstam and Elazer are just fantastically talented players, like, on their own. You put them together like this, and it's going to take more than a couple of cheap tricks to beat them. I just can't believe that they were stuck on, like, each had one expansion and that was it. And they just had a good army. You know, that good army was a one out. Uh, you know, if Hanfi had not been broken the time that he was, he was going up to Vipers. And yeah. then I was like, well, Blinding Clouds like pulls the Colossus on the Immortals even more so. And he probably still continues on the game just as the single person, you know, leading the charge. But they broke out at a very, very good time. The very good composition. Someone and the game does go on. Huh. Huh. Uh, Which, by the way, is on tonight, guys. Yeah, I was going to suggest segue that the first episode of Breaking Out, new season. Uh, $10 coming from Frog Commander says, keep it up and please share this with cute zombie grub. Well, I don't know where cute zombie grub is, but I can share it with zo regular zombie grub. <laughs> womp womp. Uh, no, excuse me. We, we kind of glanced over it earlier, but again, a big thank you to Gnome John again for that $50 donation towards the next 2v2 tournament, helping us out with our prize pools. That's really awesome. If you guys haven't, take a moment to put some Tasia claps in chat for these two fine gentlemen, Frog Commander and, uh, and uh, Gnome John. Seriously, thank you guys. I'm glad to see people are enjoying the tournament again, though. It's always a little bit questionable because 2v2 is not the normal for StarCraft 2, but it's certainly fun. And uh, it makes me happy to know that you guys are enjoying it. But okay, Corruptor's now on the way. Gonna Greater try and deal Spire. with this Colossus. Greater Spire maybe is the follow-up to it. I'm not sure if it goes straight to Broodlords, but with the amount of Phoenix around and the Colossus, I imagine using the Corruptor's as Corruptor's first would take priority. Yeah, I guess so. I was just thinking like, the, you know, going up to Tempest wouldn't be that far of a leap either, because now Harsum is on a, you know, a fine economy again. In fact, the laser also triple expanded. You know, is is third that he lost, and another one, and also the gold base. So, you know, they were, it was they were going to run out of resources eventually, but thank God they broke out when they did, and now they're looking very, really, really, really good. Uh, the army supplies combined, like Lugadine's not adding anything. It's so easy to do the math he's, here. He's really, he's really not contributing much. Uh, again, for those who are maybe uh, newer to the stream, I do want to stress because we see it being brought up in chat. This 212 supply is not actually 212 supply. Again, the the 2v2 UI is not perfect. Uh, it's much better than the default. But what it does do is still register the extra overlords. The supply cap is still only 200. But if you build like 700 pylons, it'll tell you you have like 700 supply. The Broodlords are on the way, and that's just, oh, uh, it's not going to work out. Uh, Hearthstone was already going up to Void Rays to make that really ultra composition. And Storms. I actually like the Storms and a lot, storms. too. And now he's going to be able to easily add in some Tempest to help out. Well, I, just, I feel like he knew that the Colossus had a somewhat limited life with the availability of Corruptors and whatnot. Um, possibility of Vikings. So I like the swap over to the Void Rays, to the Storm. I think it's going to complement a lot better. Yeah. I just feel so bad, like Lily Kinnean, at this point he can't even swap if he wanted to. There's just there's no way. You have no upgrades, you have no tech, he can't contribute to this outside of mining. But right now all this mining is being shut down. And I, I feel like, you know, in the late game that's just, it's impossible to, to help out, right? Like, yeah. but you need to because eventually your partner is going to get capped and sending them more money isn't necessarily going to help. Like you're going to want to add exactly. in your own, Hampy your own is tech. He's max. He's on 193 supply or whatever. Like, he, what else can you do with more money other than remax? Yeah. I guess if you start losing units. Yeah, but with you know one army against two, that army should die so fast that remaxing means remaxing into what is still left of one gigantic army, and that just doesn't work out. Right? So. <laughs> I, I feel it's almost the corruptor. We, we call it the corruptor conundrum, right? Where you know they're no good, and you're gonna have to use what three or five remaxes of them to get any real damage done. <laughs> Yeah, kind of, yeah. It looks like Lily Kinnean is going to try and start adding in here. Again, tanks, even if they don't have upgrades, you get enough, and they can well, help out in the defensive position. I agree with tanks, but I also think Widow Mines wouldn't be too bad, because they're not based on upgrades. They don't rely on upgrades, right? And if you make enough of them, and there's no detection, which, spoiler, there's no detection, then they can yeah, do a lot of damage. You're going to get, like, one great Widow Mine shot, all right? Like, you maybe you wait until you have 16 Widow Mines, you get the most magnificent shot ever, and then they get detection and it never works out again. I'm just saying, like, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can contribute, but uh, without the necessity of upgrades, I guess, that's my point. So well, I still we'll think see. they're going to be fairly dependent. But uh, Hampy is definitely a little bit exposed here. 
His Hydralis go down pretty quickly to a lot of the storm damage, and the Banelings haven't even gotten involved with oh the fight God. yet. No! Oh, Hydras! Where's the fungal when you need it? Actually, he's got two energy shy. That really sucks. Uh, Banelings went off the top of the Rootlings as well. This army gets crushed. A laser and Harstum. They lost the base for it. They're going to lose two bases for it. Maybe three bases. But they still crushed the army of Hanfi. However, I look at their army supply, and I don't know if this is enough to necessarily end the game with a counterattack. The amount of remax potential here is insane. Again, this is like six entries of production. Damn. It should be, though, shouldn't it? Like, you know, 200 army supply against 100. Lucanian is not helping out. I saw, I saw he got a factory, and I assumed he was going to try, but I was mistaken. Again, another unit not dependent on upgrades. Ravens would have been a cool thing to see uh, contributed, maybe, but... Hmm. His command centers are starting to fall, and... I, I, I still... I like the tactics of this game. I really do. Uh, you know, we have Hampy doing these hit behind the, I guess, scenes attacks. There's not really a lot of mining going on. He's cutting out with little production, what little income his opponents have. I mean, the base down here was pretty important for Harstum. Base up here is pretty important for Harstum. He doesn't have a lot of mining going on. But the army might just be a little too much at this point. Fungal Gross coming down to hold them in place by a little more time. Uh, but that, that whole feeding trick, it's the first time we've seen it. And I, I, I really want to see it again sometime. Yeah. Uh, but this time, you know, Hanfi does have really good tech. The abducts are really good. The Corruptors are still alive. They can maybe take on the Tempest. But I don't know about the Voiders and the Archon. It's not the Archon. I mean, the, the Immortals are what stand up to me the most of this. Uh, oh, the Fools are still alive. Hydra's going to be a little too expensive, but I think keep remaking is where I think a lot of this falls apart. The Roaches are your default. You know, yeah, 18 Roaches coming out of Hanfi right now. All you can really afford to make. And that's where I think the Immortals and the Archons are going to be better than most of anything else in this. But still, pushing in, slow and steady. Some blinding clouds are gonna go down. Yeah, that's gonna help a lot, actually. Still looks like it's gonna be enough for Harstum and a laser to push through yeah. and win. Uh, they held off on a like, very, very powerful attack. That early mid game, Conti looked like a struggle. But uh, that, that, that fill definitely fizzled out towards the late game. We can just unable to help. You know, I wonder, like, even just pulling the boys to contribute, soak some hits for those Roaches and Hydras, maybe. Uh, I don't know, but. It's almost, it, it, it almost felt like a bit of a troll game, guys, but it's not. These were really cool tactics that did fall flat on their face. It's kind of the same logic behind, like, a two racks. You know, you failed at the two racks, so, of course, your your late game's going to suffer because of it. And, uh... Pulled too many things at the Hydras. Yeah. None of anything, really. Good game, finally called. Looks like Team Burn the Baguettes. Harstum and a laser will take game number one in this best of three.